Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever, wherever you are watching this, I am the C-H-A-L-L, -L, and today, Chow Chats, previewing Doncaster Rovers away at Morecambe. Now, before we get started, make sure you do like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell so you never miss a YouTube video. We are on the road to 3,000 subscribers and half a million views. Let's get there as soon as possible, please. Uh, make sure you stay tuned either tonight or tomorrow morning for the DRFC Press Talk, the rebrand of our Press Talk playlist with Tom Coates from the Yorkshire Post to help preview Morecambe, review Wrexham a little bit, and also talk about the pre-match conference from Doncaster Rovers manager Grant McCann. So stay tuned for all of that coming up. And for now, guys, let's preview Morecambe versus Doncaster Rovers. So first of all, Morecambe itself, what kind of Morecambe side are we looking for? Well, McCann said it best in his conference. It's going to be a different game to the game at our place. Morecambe are... Very much a different front four. They're a, they're a very front four compared to uh, before. Obviously, they're without their star man, Michael Mellon, who returned uh, from his loan spell early, six months early. Well, six months early, obviously, returning in January. Um, for me, Morecambe, what, what are you going to get with Morecambe? Well, speaking to a few more uh, Morecambe fans, you're getting a... Well, when they're consistent, you're getting a physical team that's getting the ball forward as much as they can. They are physical, but it, the main thing with Morecambe is consistency. Can they be consistently physical? Can they be consistently attack-minded? Can they constantly get the ball forward as much as they can? They'll utilise the channels. They'll utilise the wing play. They've got some brilliant um, full-backs on their day. I mean, David Tutonda scored a goal in a 2 0 win over Barrow last week. And, you know, for me, well, uh, they, uh, obviously that was their most recent game. And, and for me, I think David tutonda has got the potential to cause us problems on the overlap, on the underlap. He's got potential to push forward really well. Obviously, Archie Mayer in goal had a good game, uh, made a few good saves. For me, I think Archie Mayer could be a problem. We have to really keep him going, keep him on his toes in goal. Um, I think Guion Edwards up front could cause us problems. Obviously, he's an experienced player. You know, there's a real opportunity here. Jacob Badal. Now, there is a guy I'm keeping my eye on. Um, obviously, Morecambe are not going through the best situation right now, ownership-wise. Obviously, we do wish the best of the Morecambe fans, and hopefully it gets resolved as soon as possible. We know there's been some problems regarding the ownership. We know there's been questions regarding the ownership of the football club. There's no denying that. I'm not saying that the Morecambe owners are bad people in general, uh, but what I am saying is there has absolutely been questions regarding their ownership, and you know, all the best of the club for trying to, you know, trying to sort it out, and hopefully they can sort it out. You know, it's not great. It's not a great situation to be in. And they could be in for, I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily say a fire sale this summer, but I would definitely say they'll they'll definitely have to, you know, loosen the wage budget or, or definitely loosen the wage bill in the summer with a few departures, definitely. Um, but it's going to be very interesting to see what kind of side they build next season. Um, obviously, they're another side that's pushing for the playoffs. They're only a couple of points outside of it in eighth place coming into this game. So, again, Morecambe's another team that, for me, really could be, you know, very interesting indeed. What should we be doing against this Morecambe team? Well, again, it all comes back to Morecambe's consistency. Can they be consistently physical? If we can, can we bury ourselves around that? Constantly getting the ball up the pitch. If we can, can Sterry and Maxwell do what they've been doing? Work on the overlaps, work on the underlaps, overlap and underlap the offensive players and get that ball back. Um, Wood looks like it could be fine. Olawu will probably play alongside him. Can, what can the centre backs do to stop Weon Edwards and stop the front four in general? The the wingers, the attack midfielder, and the strikers. So you're looking at four two three one probably here with Morkham. You know what do we do with that? What can we do to combat that? And I think we've got to be physical. We've got to be on them. Press the traps. Set the traps. Press them from the off. Um, again, put them under as much pressure as possible. We've got to really, you know, keep these guys in their shell because as soon as they come out of their shell and get their consistency back, they're a physical side, they're a physical presence, they're a physical attacking presence, uh, to be very specific. So, you know, we've got to be really careful here, but we've also got to really go for it because, you know, as what will come up in the press talk, we've got nothing else to lose. We've really got nothing else to lose. We've got about six, seven cup finals to go. And we've got a chance of sneaking into seventh, which, you know, seven points, eight, seven, eight points off the playoffs, two games in hand. 
You know, one of those games will be on Tuesday. The other one will be the last Tuesday of the season. You know, there's, there's a chance. There's a real opportunity here with uh, with this particular game. Now, as I said with the Morecambe lineup, you're probably expecting a similar one to the Barrow game, probably a similar formation in 4-2-3-1. We're going to probably match them 4-2-3-1. But saying that, look at the Wrexham game. 3-5-2, um, a three-man midfield. So you're probably looking at that and thinking, right, 4-2-3-1. Are we going to match them up? Are we going to go with the 4-3-3 or like a 4-2-3-1, but more in a style of a 4 Four one four one, I guess, kind of thing. If you if you're thinking about it like that, because you've got Adelaide and you've got Molyneux, you've got Craig as the anchor behind, you've got Belly and Biggins together, and then you've got Biamu probably. So, you know, do you look at that and go your four one four one or your four three three vary? Do you go with your four two three one and try and match them up if they're going to stick with the four two three one to start off with tomorrow? So there's a million different one questions, but in terms of my predicted lineup for the game for Rovers, I've gone with this, and it's very similar to the Wrexham game. So I've gone with Lotatala in goal. I've gone with the back four from left to right of Maxwell, Wood, who is thankfully okay, Oluwu and Sterry. I've gone with Craig as the anchor of the midfield. I don't think we're going to match them up straight away. Bailey and Biggins together as the 8 and 10 role, respectively, together. One doing the defensive, one doing the attack. It works against Wrexham. I think we keep it like that. And then Adelaide and Molyneux, either side of Maxime Biamu. Now, obviously, the bench, I believe, will be similar as well. We, we heard in the press conference, a bit of a teaser about the press talk, we spoke about how, you know, Tom Nixon, you, you know, he could be out of the team one week and, and, and filling in for Sterry if something happens the next week. And we know McCann will favour more attacking options on the bench. So that gives us an idea as to what kind of bench we're looking at for this game tomorrow. Now, what about my scoreline prediction? This is going to be a tricky one because we've been in formidable form. We're the form team in the league at the moment. Morecambe have had a couple of good results. They've definitely been doing all right in terms of overall so far. Obviously, they are chasing playoffs as well. They're only a couple of points behind seventh place, so they're going to really want that win and hope for a, a loss for Crawley, I believe it is, in seventh to sneak into seventh place. So you're, you're looking here at Morecambe and thinking, right, they're going to go for it. We know they're going to be on it tomorrow. I'd be very surprised if they weren't. Um, but if we do a job on Morecambe tomorrow, I think that would say a lot about all, our form. Uh, but it also could say a lot about the consistency of Morecambe. So I'm going to obviously stick with my team. I'm going to stick with my team for the win here. I'm going to go with another clean sheet as well. But I'm going to go with a 1-0 win. And the reason why I've gone 1-0 again is uh, like the Wrexham game. is because, well, well, obviously I didn't predict the Wrexham game to be 1-0. But uh, the reason why I've gone for a second 1-0 in a row is because, in terms of results, is because I feel like the one goal is going to edge it. And for me personally, I feel like the one goal could edge it in this game. I think that Morecambe will be on it. They're going to be aggressive. They're going to be physical. We've got to counteract that. We saw how physical Wrexham were in the game on Tuesday at times, especially in the first half where, you know, Adelaide was trying to work his magic. They were very physical. They didn't really foul them as much, but they were very physical. They were very, you know, o OTT in terms of overcomplicating his situation and forcing him into a... Uh, opportunity where nothing can thrive off. So, you know, they're going to try and do that to us. I think Jacob Badal, again, is someone who I've highlighted in the past. He's a great ball playing defender, physical, wins the duels. We're going to be very careful about him in the back line uh, tomorrow. I think he's my pick of the defence, in my opinion. And for me, we've, we've just got to try and counteract their physicalness and try and combat their physicalness and, and do what we do. But I'm going to go with the 1 0. I think, I think it's just the one goal that separates it. But again, I think it's going to be one of those games of football like Wrexham where. It's entertaining. It can be end-to-end -end at times in terms of the pressing. However, I think one goal could separate it, and I'm going to go with us getting that goal once again. So thank you very much, guys, for watching the preview. Stay tuned either tonight or tomorrow morning for the press talk with Tom from the Yorkshire Post. And for now, guys, I am the C-H-A-L-L. Ta-ra for now. That is for today.